first before we start. But this is our kind of, I mean, we did our, our kickoff call last week, but this is our really our first official Coach Basics call for, for August, and we will have four this month. And um, tonight we are really just going to talk about kind of the basics. Like, you know, most of you guys have posted your coach announcements. You know, a lot of you guys are in conversations with people. And, and so we're just going to talk about how to – what to do after that coach announcement, how to build credibility, you know, what type of things you, sh you could, should be posting about, how to, how to go through those, those conversations with people, how to reach out and invite people, and um, just kind of all those, those basic things, but that can be really hard things. And I want you to know that like if you're struggling with, with, with what to say to people or in conversations or how to handle objections or what to post, like, Trust me, like I get it, I get it, Becca gets it. You know, we we were there. And I think you would probably find very few people, even the successful people in this business that found it really easy to do those things in the beginning. Um, so I totally, totally get whatever it is, probably everything that you're thinking right now. Um, but, you know, I just remember thinking, I don't know what's going on. My coach, keep, my coach won't quit posting and Coach Basics, and like I can't keep up. And so, like I will tell you, I went through Coach Basics, I think at least three times because I just needed to get it. I needed to get it one more time, you know. So, so don't feel like. And if you miss a call, guys, like it's okay. I mean, I think these training calls are very important. Our team calls are very important. But you know, one of the beauties about coaching is that we can do this and live our life. You know, we're not stuck in an office from eight to five or whatever. But you know, I, I just remember many times like putting the boys to bed or something like that. And I just have my earbuds in and I would just listen. Like I couldn't participate. I couldn't ask questions because I was trying to, you know, I was trying to be with the boys, but I needed to hear things or I would catch the recordings. So as, as important as I think it is to show up for these things, um, definitely, definitely, you know, try to make it a priority. But if you've got something going on, just, you know, we, we that's why we record them. That's why we record the videos. But so um, if we are talking about posting uh, on social media, about sharing our stories, we're talking about inviting tonight. Um, and as far as posting, you know, we will hear us say over and over, that is, you know, three to five times a day. Um, and I remember as a brand new coach, I thought, what the crap am I going to post about three times a day, let alone five, you know? I mean, like I would post a picture of my kids like twice a week and, you know, I was like, how am I just going to start posting, you know? And so that, yeah, that was a really a struggle for me. And especially that workout selfie, like how do I take a selfie of myself working out? Like, I mean, I look like an idiot. I mean, it, I just, I just didn't know what to do, but you, I would just, honestly, I would watch other people. I would watch my coach and, and I, at first I honestly just mimicked her in a lot of ways, but, um, you know, anything, it can be a sweaty headshot. It can be a picture of you working out. It can be a picture of you post-workout. It could be a picture of you standing in front of your TV or your iPad with your with your program on there. I mean, like it could be anything. I've taken throughout y'all you know, two years of workout selfies. I've done it all. Like pictures of my feet with weights on the floor. Like I mean, just it doesn't matter. Just so long as you are in the post and and people know that um, that you are are the one in the picture and that. It's your words in the post. You know, people want to be inspired by you. They don't want to be inspired by Autumn. You know, they can they can watch the infomercials to do that. They want to be inspired by you. Um, and if I if I can like teach you that right now, people buy into you as a person, as an individual, as a coach. So be you in your posts. If you feel like being goofy and silly in your workout post, do it. If you feel like sharing scripture and something deep do it. You know, if you just want to talk, share a motivational quote that touches you on word swag, do it. If you take something from the compound effect or, you know, one of the things I would do in the beginning in my workout post was the, the like autumn or, or Shalene or somebody would say something. And I was like, dang, I want to post about that because that, that just got my butt going, you know? And so like, I would, that's where I would draw my motivation and my, my inspiration from a morning workout post. And really, honestly, people are just inspired by you showing up 
every single day. Just the fact that you get up and make your workout a priority. If you do it at 4.30 in the afternoon or at 10 o'clock at night, if you do it and do it daily, that just blows people's minds, okay? And so that is that, you know, posting three to five times a day because, guys, this is a social media business. There's no way around that. You know, we don't, that's it. Like I said, you know, we don't have to go to an office for eight hours a day. Um, our business is built from our homes um, on social media. And so, you know, we have to post. If you don't post, you don't have a business. So that's where the three to five times a day comes in. Um, you know, and we talked a little bit about this last week, but you know, just pick four or five things that are, are specific to you. Um, and it, obviously it does not all need to be about beach body. I'm going to mute you guys. Um, just because I can hear some background noise if I can. Um, all. Oh. If you need to, guys, if you need to talk, uh, there's a chat thing at the bottom. You can ask me a question and it pops up or um, you can just unmute yourself, I think, if you have a question. But so four to five things that are just partic particularly pertain to you. It can be about your family. Um, you know, like Emily, you have a daughter who plays travel softball. That's a huge part of your life. You work out at a fit. I mean, you work at a fitness facility. Um, you know, it can be faith. It can be uh, just something fun. You know, maybe you're a cancer survivor or, or maybe you work with people that are cancer survivors. You know, maybe you like to scrapbook or maybe you like to go play bingo or go bowl league bowl. I don't know. You know, but like just come up with four or five things that pertain to you and, and that's what you post about. And so, like, when I was at Summit, y'all, my desk is a mess, and I try to keep it clean, but um, <clears throat> when I was at Summit, and I was in one of those training things, like, I sat down and just kind of made a list. You can't really see this very well, um, but there are four things, and I just, four things, kind of general things that are relate to me, but I kind of broke them down with bullet points. Um, one, with my, where I'm at in my business, like, I really want to encourage female entrepreneurs, you know, business motivation. And I broke that down into like integrity, you know, hustle, purpose, fail forward, be innovative. Um, I wrote Jesus. I mean, Jesus is who I am. You know, he's a big part of me. Uh, you know, I want to share about salvation. I don't want to be shy about that. I feel like that is one reason God led me to this coaching opportunity um, is to just proclaim the name of Christ. And, you know, I could not be where I'm at physically or, or spiritually or financially without him and proclaim that, you know, he's my number one focus. My family. Yes, I have, we all have a family, but I have two small boys. They play baseball. They, we like to go hiking. We swim a lot. You know, that means we're on the go a lot. And so I talk about that in relation to our health, keeping them active. Um, you know, how do I prep for days at the pool and stuff like that? So that's one way I talk about um, my family. Clean eating. Obviously, we're all focusing on clean eating, but it looks different for all of us. I talk about planning, you know, especially now that we're back in school. I'm going to share like fast, easy meal plans, recipes. Um, maybe you're single. Maybe you don't have kids. Maybe you or or you, you know, your kids are gone and you have grandkids. And so you just talk about these things that are important to all of us as they pertain to you. Um, you know, so that is, you know, like I said, about food. I'm going to talk about fast and I love flavor in my food. That is what, if I could remember like one thing that kind of sticks out to me through these past two years, people think that clean eating is boring. They think that there's no flavor and you just eat like grilled chicken and broccoli all the time, you know, but like, I like flavor in my food. That zucchini lasagna I made tonight was the bomb. Like it was, it was, it had tons of flavor, you know? And so I really should have put more into that post, but I didn't. Um, but anyway, so those are kind of the things that I focus on in my posting, in my three to five times a day. I don't just talk about, don't just talk about beach body. I don't just talk about workouts. I don't want to talk about meal plans, but you see me kind of pepper in there things that, that I do with the boys or, you know, just extracurricular activities. Or like today I posted about that I updated the knobs on my, in my kitchen. Um, so anyways, that is, that is kind of like just find those things. And it doesn't have to be really broad. It doesn't have to be like 15 things. <laughs> My husband. I wish he would go to bed. Um, but anyways, yeah. So just find those things and just kind of stay focused on that. And that's what you post about. Like, I mean, like seriously, like make a list on your computer and have those four things. And if you're at a loss, like what do I post about? You know, I've posted like twice today. I should post something else. Look at that list and just choose from it. It makes it pretty simple. As a brand new coach, I posted my workout 
selfie in the morning. And I still kind of follow this way, this plan. I posted my workout selfie in the morning. I would snap a picture of my lunch or a snack during the day. Um, at around dinner time, I would post like a healthy recipe or a picture of what we were making for dinner. Um, somewhere in there, I would post something about my family. And at night before I went to bed, I would post a motivational quote. And I actually scheduled out my motivational post to go out at like 8 or 8.30 every night. Like I used Hootsuite. It's, um, Becca, would you mind to type that in, Hootsuite, into the chat bar? Um, and I would just actually schedule out those nightly posts because I knew I was going to be tired or I was going to be putting the kids to bed or I was going to be on a call and I wouldn't wouldn't be able to to stop and think of something profound and motivational to say. So I would schedule those out for like a whole week at a time. And so that was really helpful time-wise for me. So that's what I posted about. Um, and it's going to feel odd at first, obviously. Well, I mean, for some of you, it may not. Some of you may, this just may be your jam. It may fit, feel odd at first, um, but it becomes so much more natural, I promise. Um, people will start to notice. They'll, that's how you gain a following. That's how you people start to kind of pay attention and see what you're about is through your posts. And you'll start to get messages. You guys probably already have, you know, messages that say, you know, thank you. You're inspiring me. And, uh, you know, whatever it is you're doing, keep doing it. You look great, whatever. But it's inspiring to people to, to, to be consistent and to, to um, just show up every single day. Um, one thing as far as posting to get people interacting on your page. And so I'm not going to go into like Facebook algorithms, but um, the way Facebook works is the more likes or comments that your posts get, the more your stuff pops up in people's newsfeed. Okay. So if I were to, to post a picture of myself tonight and have two dresses on and say, you know, I'm trying to pick out a dress for date night on Saturday night and I just can't decide which one A or B. So if like 50 people commented and gave me feedback, which people love to give feedback, um, if they commented on that a whole lot, that post would just keep popping up in people's newsfeed. The more people commented and and post, liked it, it would just keep popping up more and more. So that's one right, way to drive like a, attention to your, your Facebook page and what you're doing is to occasionally just ask for people's opinion. It can be about anything. It can be about makeup. It can be about clothes. It can be about, you know, um, what new car to, to buy or what color car to buy or something like that. People love to give, give their opinions. Um, so that is posting. Do you guys have any questions or is there anything you're struggling with as far as posting? Like, your workout selfie or, you know, anything like that. Are you guys struggling to get in your post every day or is that pretty, pretty doable? Ideas? You guys good? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so as far as your photos, that was a big thing that I was not very good. And sometimes I can get kind of lazy about making sure my photos are good, but obviously we can post all day long. But if our photos aren't attractive, not that we look attractive, but if they're not clear or if the lighting is bad or if, you know, I, you'll find really that when you put words on a photo, people are more likely to stop and read what you have to say as opposed to just a picture of yourself. Um, but your photos should be clear. So I'm going to share my screen right now. Um, and as far as your, like your Facebook profile, um, your, you should have a profile picture that is either just you or a, like for me, it's a picture of me with my boys. So people know that Rachel Jansen Mitchell is the, the mom, right? Um, if you have a, a picture up there of you and like 15 girlfriends, <laughs> people aren't going to come to your page and know which one is you, right? So it should be a picture of, of you that's clear. Um, and that definitely reflects who you are. So mine is kind of fun and funky right now because we took this picture one day and it was just funny. Um, your Facebook banner, uh, I think it's really important to create a banner that really reflects who you are. So you can't really see all of mine unless you click on it. But guys, these are so easy to create, especially with Canva. I used to use PicMonkey for everything, but and Canva is so much easier to, to create and edit photos. So all you would do would be to go to Canva and choose to create a Facebook banner and you can just put in a collage of pictures. Definitely. I think that some of them should be you. It can be quotes. It can be scripture. It can be whatever, whatever you want it to be, but just so long as it reflects who you are. Um, and you know, your, your Facebook page is where you share about your life. Um, it's where you post about what you're doing every day. It's where you handle objections. Um, and so, you know, that this should definitely 
be clear pictures, should reflect who you are, and, and should give people insight into who you are as a person and what your intention is with coaching. Because I promise you that as soon as you go and you invite someone to a challenge group, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to go to your page. Um, they're going to be like, what is this chick inviting me to? What is she all about? You know, is she doing this stuff she's asking me to do? And so if they go to your page and you've got like a picture of your, your um, Pokemon up here or something, you know, and you haven't posted a workout selfie in seven days, they're going to be like, whatever, I'm not responding to her, you know? And so that's where, you know, what you have, what you post and your profile really and truly, um, it may sound, seem minimal, but it has a really big impact on those conversations and, and your ability to inspire someone and to encourage them and help them make that decision to, to do something for themselves as well. Um, so, your posts as, as well should, like I said, address objections. So like just a quick show of hands, who's getting objections? Yeah, me too. Okay. Um, so <laughs> Emily's like, I will, I know I will. Um, so like just, if you guys don't mind, would you just chat in the, like type in the chat bar what objections that you're getting? Um, and I'll kind of address those as we go, but I'm just going to share some of that, that I get a lot or that I have had, uh, you know, I said a lot of, I mean, just oddly look at me. I got like my nice shirt on and I got my PJ pants on another beautiful thing about coaching. Um, but, um, one thing, Hey, is this Tiffany? Yes. Yeah. Um, so one thing that, like I said, people think that clean eating is boring. So, you know, I always have pictures that I post to my food. Like, I I'm not going to go out of my way to, like, get out the fine china and set my table or anything like that. But I definitely try to make the picture attractive. Like, I don't, I used to post pictures of my meals on a Dixie plate, you know, or something like that. But I try to put it on a real plate. I try to make sure the lighting's good, that I have, like, lots of color on my, on my table. Um, <laughs> One thing that I really used to do, and I need to get back to this, is I don't have any containers right here, but like I would post a picture of like what we had for dinner, and I would set my color-coded containers around it so that people would see that the chicken was a protein, that the, the rice was a carb, that, you know, that the heaping thing of veggies was one container of veggies, and I would say like, this is just like a third or a quarter of what I get to eat in a day. And so it also makes the picture really pretty. So I would, I would, you know, it makes food not look so boring. And it also addressed the objection that I would get a lot. Well, you know, I don't want to starve myself. And I'm going to be like, I do not starve myself. It's hard for me to get all my food in, in a day. And so that would kind of address that objection of, of, you know, how much food. Um, too expensive, obviously, we are all going to get that. And that comes from, you know, you can talk about the cost of Shakeology. Don't shy away from that. Like tonight, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you how I did this. Let's see. I'm going to find this response. Okay. Hold on. Let's see. And you guys use this. Let's see. This was in a conversation, but I'm going to type it anyway. Somebody told me that they didn't know if they could spend that much on Shakeology or, um, you know, anyways. But I, I just said, this was in response. This was not in a post. I'll, I'll get back to posts in just a minute. But somebody told me something, and I spelled, misspelled Shakeology, so forgive me. Tracy would totally point that out. Um, I said Shakeology comes out to about $3 a day, and I'm, I was telling her in the challenge pack. And I, tell her, I told her, I was like, we just planned that into our weekly grocery budget. Uh, we're buying a meal replacement, so not actually adding to the budget. You know, that's one thing when people see the cost of Shakeology, they're like, oh, I can't spend an extra, you know, $140 a month. And that's when I'm like, well, it's a meal replacement. Like, you're, you're, you're still going to eat those meals. You're just going to replace one of them with Shakeology. And in the challenge pack, it comes out to only like $3 a day. Uh, if you just buy it by itself, it's like $4 a day. And so, you know, and her response was like, oh, you know, that's true. That makes sense. We could totally afford that, you know? And so that's one way to address that cost objection. So like take that, copy it, paste it into Evernote and use it if you need to. But as far as your posts, that's where like talking about people don't know that it's a meal replacement. They're definitely going to say, I'm not buying that because I said that at first. Like I, t and I tell people that I didn't buy Shakeology at first. I thought that was crazy. It was like a bag of powder, 140 bucks for a bag of powder, you know? And, um, 
So I talk about, I say that in my post. When I talk about Shakeology, I'm like, I didn't buy it at first. Like I thought it was way too expensive and people who bought it were stupid, basically. And, but then I kept seeing all these results and I thought, well, I should probably try it at least, you know? Um, and so when I did, I figured out, like I can replace my breakfast and this is all in a post. Like, I mean, I put this more eloquently in a post, but I can replace my breakfast with this, which I used to stop at a gas station and get a Diet Coke and a chicken biscuit and spend like five bucks easily. Why can't I work on my health and save a dollar a day, which comes out to what? Like 30 bucks a month. It just makes sense, you know? And so I'll, I'll, I'll post things like that. Or I'll talk about the fact that, you know, I can spend four dollars on a shake or I can spend five dollars on a like a, a tall latte at Starbucks you know and I, you can do like a side-by-side -side comparison and you can you know there are images if you go out there and search I don't use a lot of stock images because I feel like people want to hear my story um, you know more than just what's out there on the internet they can find that on their own but you can do like a side-by-side -side comparison or you can go to a coffee shop and buy a, a coffee and hold it up and say, this cost me $4.56. My shake cost me $4. Cafe latte tastes like a cafe latte, you know? And so like you can talk about the cost of Shakeology. Um, I aim to post about Shakeology at least once a week. Um, and I will, it's not always a cost objection thing, but I always want people to know that it's a meal replacement. And I always share something that Shakeology has done for me. Emily, a Hardy's cheese, what did you, a cheese and egg biscuit. With a Hardy's is dang expensive. It used to be cheap. It's $7.29. See, there you go. Way cheaper. Um, let's see, not right now. Time is a big thing, okay? Time is a big objection that you will get. When I get that objection in a conversation, I say something like, well, how much time do you think, you know, you need to work? I mean, how much time do you think it will take for you to, to work out or to meal plan? And most people in their brains are thinking like to get the kind of results that, that she's getting or that her challenger got, they've got to be working out like at least an hour a day. I just don't have time. And that's why in my post, I talk about, you know, like I, you know, in the morning I'm going to do it because I have to get up super early and leave my house at 630. And I'm going to point out the fact that, you know, I, I made time for my 30 minute workout and I got it done. It was out of the way for the rest of the day. And I felt good because it was done and it was just 30 minutes, you know. If people tell you they don't have time, um, tell them, well, there's a 22 minute program you can do. I mean, somebody can find 22 minutes to work out in a day, right? Um, so talk about those things in your posts. Um, and, you know, even in your challenge group ads, you know, I usually include that. And it says somewhere, you know, in the group, we will be doing 30 minutes or less of workouts, you know, every day. And so time is a big objection. Next month when I get more money, um, if somebody, like if the conversation ends that way, Jay, that's a good one. I will always say, well, you know what? I am always running challenge groups. I, every single month I run a challenge group. If you decide, you know, when you, if you decide next month that you want to do it, I'm here. Do you mind if I follow up with you to see if you want a spot next month's group? And most people will be like, yes, thank you. Because to them, that means, you know, well, you know, she's not just in it to make a buck. Like, and I always offer to help them in some way. I'm like, if you want, if you want to follow me and just use one of my meal plans and try it and see how, how, if you have results, you know, uh, and let me know. I'd love to know if that works for you or, you know, go to my, go to my, my, watch me on my page. I share recipes every day or something like that, you know? And so, but people, what you'll, I'll find, I have found is that, you know, people give me that response, not right now, maybe next month. And they usually do end up, if you continue to post, if you continue to share, if you continue to talk about your challenge groups and invite people, people, a lot of people come around if they really, really want to. Um, I'm too busy. I can't add one more thing. That's a big one, you know, and I just, sometimes I just say, well, you know, you said you wanted to do this because you needed to get healthy. You wanted to do this for your family or you, you need to lose weight or your health is going to just continue to go down. You can, you know, sounds like you really need to make time for this. You know, is there something that you can cut out? I mean, sometimes I'm just blunt with people because honestly, and I say we make time, I don't say this to somebody's face, but like I will post about it. Like we make time for what's important for us. You know, there, there's a post right there, you know, um, that's a, there's a motivational post, you know, we make time for what's important to us, you know, 
Um, if you have time to go to Hardee's and spend eight bucks and sit down for 30 minutes and made the, eat a meal that's going to kill you, you know, you have time to work out. Um, so I don't say those things that bluntly. That's just to you guys. You know what I mean? You get that, right? Okay. I would eat healthy if I didn't have to cook it myself. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. So, um, I mean, like steam bags and veggies. Like, I buy those. I post about this a lot. I buy those pre-wrapped sweet potatoes. Like, I stick a bag of veggies in the microwave for five minutes. I stick a sweet potato in the microwave for five minutes. I mean, you can buy veggie burgers that you microwave in a minute. I mean, there's lots of ways to do this. And one thing, Tracy has a challenger who has the neatest story. Uh, Robbie, you guys have probably seen him post or seen his transformation, but he would not eat vegetables. Like when he signed up for the 21 Day Fix to do our challenge, she was like, I have no idea what he's going to eat, Rachel. He says he won't eat anything on the list. That guy is eating like Brussels sprouts and cauliflower now. I mean, people... People, they see the benefit of it, and if they'll stick with it, they kind of learn that, hey, I actually do like healthy food. You know, I've just kind of been making that excuse for a long time. And so you can talk about things like that. Put those things into posts. So, like, if you get an objection about time, you know, make sure you have a post about how much time it takes you to do your workout or, or do that post about, you know, at night, share a motivational quote about making time for what's important to you. Um, you know, if you have objections about cost, Share a picture of your weekly budget for your food and show where how you work um, Shakeology into it. You know, I mean, like any objection that you get in private, you can talk about it on Facebook in public. Okay, you don't have to name names. You don't have to like reference anybody, but just addr address it and how you incorporate it into your own life. Um, does that help? Does that help you guys? Do you guys have any more? This is kind of fun. It's like Give me a nasty recipe and I'll make it clean, but it's objections and I'll address it for you. Um, and you have to practice this. I mean, you're not going to be able to do these things and post these things just, just over and over and over. I'll address the GM. Hold on. Um, but like it takes practice. Like it definitely takes practice. Like I still, um, I still kind of work play with wording and you know, when I get an objection, I'll, you know, sometimes I kind of feel like, like I take it personally, but it, it's not personal. People are saying no for these reasons. That's not, it doesn't have anything to do with you as a coach. Um, but if you can educate people and, and address that objection before you get it next time, it will help you and it will help that person as well. Um, because a lot of things, these objections are just mindsets. And if you can change people's mindset, you can do a lot for them. Okay. Um, the gym. People say they like to go to a gym. Becca, is that what you're saying? Um, I would do a post about how much money I save by not going to the gym. And, you know, like Tracy, did y'all see Tracy's transformation today? She specifically said in her transformation, I have not stepped foot in the gym since February or something like that, you know? And so, you know, if, but some people, I mean, aren't, they love the gym and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if that's what people enjoy and that's how they're going to stay healthy. That's great. Uh, you know, you could still offer like if a lot of people just struggle with nutrition. If they just want to do the nutrition, the Shakeology and the meal planning portion of it, or, or tell them about beach body on demand, you know, a club challenge pack, you can take that to the gym and, and, and do it, do that at the gym. And so like, I would definitely suggest that, but some people are just going to be like, no, I go to the gym and there's, you know, you just say, well, good luck. I hope you do well. Um, but again, just practice these things. Read your personal development. Um, I, I don't know why. Where's my compound effect? It's in here. Hold on just a second. Hello. Are you waiting for my phone? So one thing, like the compound effect. Are you guys reading it? It's an awesome book, and it's going to give you so many. Now I got it, Becca. I got, I got this is my copy. I had, that was the extra one. Um, it's going to give you so many things to talk about and help you as you talk to, to um, people in these conversations. So, like, I mean, here's a post. This is from Chapter 2 on page 23. It says, everything in your life exists because you first made a choice about something. You know, um, that's, I mean, that's a, you can put that on a, use Canva and make a little cute image and type, talk about how, you know, I made a choice to get healthy. I could have chosen to sit here and watch The Bachelorette, 
but I am choosing to do my meal prep and my meal planning for the week because I didn't get it done yesterday. You know, or, you know, I'm, I'm choosing to get up and work out instead of laying in bed for an extra 30 minutes. Every, every, you make choices about everything. You know, that's a post. You can put that on a workout selfie in the morning. Um, but read your personal development. It's going to give you ideas. It's going to give you fuel um, for, for what you're trying to portray, what you're trying, your message. And it's also going to help you in those conversations. Um, and one thing, I listened to this call today. Um, this guy was saying, you know, we, we believe all this stuff about our fitness. We believe that if we don't work out, if we don't eat clean, if we don't meal plan, if we don't do our prep, we're going to fail. You know, it's the same way in your, in your business, guys. If you don't do these things, if you're not reading your personal development, if you're not posting consistently, if you're not inviting consistently, your business will fail. You know, it's the same concept. And that's what this book is all about. Um, and it has so much good information. It's going to help you, you know, not just come up with, with ideas to post about, but it's going to help you understand that, that workout selfie, posting it every day, that, you know, talking about Shakeology, even when it feels weird and, and salesy, um, you know, is, is going to help you and educate somebody. It's all going to compound and you're going to see results, okay? Um, and the thing about Shakeology and talking about it, you don't have to be salesy. It may feel awkward to talk about it, but people really honestly want to know what it's all about. And so, you know, definitely don't shy away from that. Um, start a challenge group at the gym with beach body workouts if they want to go to the gym. She said, yeah, Emily works at a gym. She says we do them every morning at 5 a.m. They'll get the workouts to keep at home when they can't get to the gym. That's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, so that's posts. Challenge group ads. Um, so we kind of talked about this a little bit and a lot of you guys have just stepped out there and done it already. Um, Oh, he's not coming. But you post your coaching announcement and then you have to follow it up um, with a challenge group ad. And so, like, Becca, did you find one to share? Can you share your screen? I'm going to unmute you. Oh, Becca, 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 Becca. So, um, like I said, if you don't advertise, you're not going to find challengers. I mean, social media is your platform for this business. So, if you're not talking about challenge groups, you're not going to be able to find challengers, right? Um, so for a challenge group ad, you don't have to overthink it. It doesn't have to be something super like super professional or anything, but it needs to be a picture of you. Um, the post needs to tell your story. It needs to talk about, you know, what, why you're running a challenge group, why you are inviting people to do health and fitness with you. Um, you know, this one's good. She wrote, she broke it down on the, on the image about what the challenge group was going to include 30 minute workouts, portion control containers, meal planning, support and encouragement, you know, and she made it fun. I mean, she made it fun. That's what I love about this picture is that she just made it fun. Um, so you definitely have to share what you're offering because you can talk about a challenge group all day long, but people don't know what a challenge group is. I didn't know what a challenge group was until I found my coach's blog um, and read about it. But you've got to, and it, even if you don't put it on the picture, there's another one. You know, you need to put it in the, you need to put it in the wording of the post regardless. Um, but you do have that option to put it on the picture. Um, and these things are so easy to create, guys. You know, last week we talked about picture apps. And especially now with like um, WordSwag and Canva. Uh, what are some other ones that we talked about? I really, really like Canva. I use it all the time. I like that one. I think that was good. Uh, let's see. What are some other apps that I told you guys about? Canva and WordSwag are the ones that I use the most, honestly. Canva would be good for a um, challenge group ad. So, yeah, that's good. Um, so, those are some good ideas. But it's got to be a good ad. You can't just say, you know, come join a challenge group with me. We're going to work out and meal plan. But it's got to kind of be emotional. It's got to have something of you in it. Um, don't go overboard. You know, don't create this super complicated image. But make sure that you are in the image. You know, tell people what you have to offer Definitely you need to share the start date. Um, it has to have a way to contact you, how many spots and a deadline. Um, so I'm going to, hey, Becca, would you get out of that for a second? I'm going to um, share something. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I was going to find some wording to, share, to show you guys. And I think I've already shared this in the, okay, let's see. Yeah. 
shared I've shared some wording in in the the coach basic group, but this one this was just one I had fun with. But I talked, you know, I started it off with like balance. It's just a funny word. It's a weird word. Like, what does it mean? You know, sometimes it's offensive. <laughs> you know, if somebody says you need balance, it says you're doing something wrong. If you have balance, then maybe you're not fitting in everything that you're supposed to, you know? And so that was kind of emotional. That was the emotional part of it for me. Um, and, you know, basically I wanted to portray that nobody truly has balance. Like we're all just kind of working at it. Um, I, I don't have balance, even though I get up and work out every day and I do try to meal plan every week. I don't do it perfectly. I work hard at it because I believe in it and I think it's important and my family is important to me, but I don't, I'm not perfect. And you know, a balance is not perfect. And so um, I kind of shared part of my story. I got the emotional part in there. Um, and it was genuine. I don't make this stuff up. I don't just say it just for a workout post. It's, it's always genuine. Um, but I, then I jump into telling people what I have to offer, that it's a 30-day faith and fitness group. We're going to work out for 30 minutes. We're going to meal plan. We're going to prep. We're going to, you know, replace a meal each day. Um, with the shake, we're going to, you know, there's going to be support and encouragement. We're going to talk about fast and easy meal plans for for. I'm targeting moms, busy moms as we go back to school. And then, you know, I share one of the things I definitely share is how they can contact me, which I put that, that link to my event in there. I told how many spots I'm looking for 10 women. Um, and I kind of give a deadline, which is like we start August 22nd. Um, and you, you've just got to do it guys. Like you can't say, well, I don't know what to say, or I don't know what people think, or I don't know when to post it. I mean, you just got to do it. If you don't ever do it, you won't get good at it. And so in the beginning, you know, my challenge group ads were not, they didn't come this easily to me. Um, a lot of times I would just take wording that my coach suggested, like I'm sharing with you guys and that, that Timmy will share and that Becca will share. Um, but you know, some of you guys are really good with words. I mean, some of you guys, your posts just like D, I mean, like your posts always, I mean, I always walk away like, wow, I really feel like I know her a little bit better, you know, but because of what you post. And so like some of you are good with words, some of you are not, but it doesn't matter. Like, like we can help you with wording. We will give you lots of lots of wording, but you've got to, those are some things in your challenge group ad. You've got to post about it. Um, and I will share a challenge group ad. I shared mine Sunday night and then I shared it again yesterday, I think around lunchtime and I'll probably share it again. Um, share the same wording. I might use a different picture or something or I might use the same one, but I definitely will share it again next Sunday night. Um, I will share about it more than once. And it definitely gets easier. So posting those challenge group ads are just like your coaching ad. You've got to do it. If you don't do it, people aren't going to know what, what the heck you're talking about, you know? And, and so, but, and also you'll find that you probably have responses to, to your challenge group ads. You may not get a ton, but a lot of people will probably end up contacting you. And it's a way to start conversations, especially this early in your businesses. Um, and it's going to just give away, it's going to give people uh, a way to get in touch with you, kind of open a door more or less, but you've got to, and do y'all have any questions about ads before I go into inviting? Um, anybody? Does that overwhelm you? No. Okay. <clears throat> so even though we're posting about it and we're kind of educating people on social media, you've got to invite, you've got to, you've got to send those one-on-one -on -one invites. Um, You've got to, and you know, new coaches, and I was one of them, um, are so afraid to invite people. Like we're so afraid to reach out and say, hey, do you want to join the challenge group? Um, and, and, and I get it. Like I, that was me. I mean, like without a doubt, I was like, what if somebody says no? What if they think I think they're fat, you know, or, or something like that? That was like my biggest fear. What if somebody thinks I think they're overweight? You know, uh, but it, one thing that I think that you guys will find and that I found pretty quickly is people, they want help. They, they want help. They want to be inspired. They want to be shown what to do. Um, and, and guys like, yeah, we're coaches and we earn an income from doing this. But like I started coaching because this stuff worked for me, you know, and so like I know it will work for other people. And if we can get those tools in their hands, if we can get a a workout program that they can do at home that they can meal plan that they can. I mean, like, I mean, I opened the meal plan and did it on my, my, on my own without even my coach's help. You know, I mean, anybody can do this. I mean, we are there to help and to give ideas and to, 
and motivate. But these programs, anybody can do them and there's nothing crazy to them. It's just like eating clean food, you know, in the proper portions and moving your body. And I mean, replacing a shake every, I mean, replacing a meal every day with Shakeology is like simple as can be. And so it's just a clean clear cut way to get healthy. And, and so, you know, like if we can get people in these challenge groups, then we're helping people. Um, but some of the ways to begin to invite, obviously we talked about that memory jogger, right? So hopefully you guys all printed that out and you came up with a huge list of people that you can start inviting. You can do this different ways. You can send emails. Um, I typically just use Facebook Messenger for the most part to do my inviting. But you can start to see who's watching you, who's following you. And you know that by, um, by the people who like your posts um, consistently. You can start there. You know, so if you see that, you know, as you post your workout selfie every day or you post a picture of food or a recipe and the same people are, are following and liking, you can start there and just send a message. The, the message that I send to people like that is, hey, thanks for following me and supporting me, you know, I, in my health journey. I really hope that you find something that's inspiring, that has, has motivated you in some way and and just you know if there's anything that I can help you with let me know and people usually respond okay um, and so we get into a conversation about health and fitness and that naturally leads into invitation to our challenge groups um, you can um, but one one major point is if you're posting if you're adding value if you're if you're if you're present on social media people are following you um, now you'll get messages from people who never like your posts who never comment and they'll be like you know you are totally inspiring me I got up and I worked out today just because I saw your workout selfie again and I was like dang I need to do something you know and you'll get a post from somebody just completely out of the blue and and that's like that's the best feeling to know that what you're doing every day is really making a difference for somebody, okay? So people are definitely following you. You can start there, you can invite those people. Definitely get out that memory jogger and, and use it to come up with, with names of people to invite. Um, and you know, we are sharing sample invites in, in the Coach Basics group. I will, I'm happy to share them. Um, you know, if Becca and Timmy will definitely share those as well. If you have a, an invitation that, you know, people seem to respond to, share it with us. Let us know what, what you are having success with. But, you know, you can start conversations in so many ways that you don't have to just, it's, you don't have to jump in and say something about a challenge pack or a challenge group. Like, I honestly suggest that you don't. Like, I think you should definitely be out there starting conversations, connecting with people. You know, you might send a, a friend from high school or from college a message and say, hey, you know, we haven't talked in a long time. It looks like you're doing great. Your kids are how old, you know, or, you know, comment on somebody who bought a new car or a new house or, you know, somebody has really cute family photos, you know, go to their page, go to people's pages before you message them and, and look and see what's going on in their life and just start conversations, genuine com conversations, you know, not, not um, fake ones, but you can definitely start conversations that will lead to, so what are you up to? What have you been doing lately? And you can just lead into, well, actually, I've really gotten into to improving my health and fitness lately so much so that, you know, I've started to, to actually help other people do it. And I run these monthly challenge groups where I motivate and encourage people and we work out and we meal plan. And it's just, you know, it's just something that's really become a big part of my life. Would you be interested in, in hearing more about it? And so if you're starting conversations, if you're, you're talking to people, if you're interacting, if you're posting, it all just compounds. That's where this, this compound effect comes in. It all compounds and you build this momentum and, and you start to see, see, see results results you build credibility and so that is what that's where the inviting process comes in um, and then as you're starting conversations you're you're having you're talking to people you're answering questions you've got to follow up like I think Janelle Summers said it on that that um, super Saturday I almost said dirty 30 video that super Saturday video um, you know these conversations don't happen within like a 24-hour time time span some do but you know, typically these conversations are happening over a series of days, even weeks, you know, um, like I just, I feel like, I feel like the farther I get into this and like the, the people that I'm interacting with are people that don't know as well. So my conversations are taking longer, which is fine because I want people to trust me. 
But that's the thing. People have to trust you. They're going to have lots of questions. You have to expect lots of questions. You should be asking lots of questions of people. You know, I, I, I don't ever... There are times in my business where my conversations have just gone really fast and we jump into the challenge pack and sale and everything like that. And I feel like I didn't build a strong enough relationship. We want to build relationships with these people because we're really offering to help them with something that is extremely personal. You know, like I said, like I say a lot, Becca, we're not selling candles. You know, we're not selling candles that are just going to sell on somebody's desk. We are, we're offering, we're helping, encouraging people to make a very important potentially life-changing decision about their health. And so you want them to trust you. So you got to follow up, you know, and people get busy. People, you know, just like you and me, um, they've got a lot going on. You know, they might see your message and invitation while they're driving somebody to soccer practice and the kids are screaming in the back and they don't get to, to respond and then they just forget about it. So if you don't follow up, then, you know, that's, you know, that's your loss, honestly. But a lot of times people want to respond. They're just maybe in a place where they can't respond. Um, or maybe they forget about it. Or maybe they have to really think about it. And you following up and just showing interest and making sure that you, you do find out if they want to make a decision or not, it, it makes a difference. Okay. So I would say like 80% of my challenge pack sales come from follow-ups, not from that initial invite, but from me following up one or two times, you know, and I definitely follow up at least twice with people. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll say, hey, you know, I just wondered if you uh, were, were still interested in joining the challenge group. It starts, you know, Monday. I've got like two spots left and I want to save you a spot if you're interested. And I usually trick, you know, like jog people, um, their memory and help them to kind of make a decision. Or Becca, how do you follow up? Do you have any tips on that? I, I do what you say you do, um, mm -hmm. you know, wait a, a couple of days, to follow up with them and say, hey, I don't know if you had a chance to see the message, but I just wanted to check back in with you and let you know that we're starting the group in a few days and I'd love to save you a spot. Do you want one? Yeah, that's good. Um, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> um, so we're inviting, we're posting, we're following up. You have to track it. That's a big, if you will start this now, because uh, if you invite like 15 people on Sunday and 10 people don't respond and you're not tracking it, you don't know who you've invited, right? So tracking is a big thing. Um, and I really hope that you guys are all using your business activity tracker. So like this is the business activity tracker. We talked about that. Um, I have like, I have it printed off. And what I do is on the back, I just make notes, you know. Um, I've tried all kinds of things. I've used Excel. I've used Asana. Um, I use my calendar when I'm on the go because obviously I don't carry that binder everywhere. Um, but you've got to track it. So one of the ways I'll do it is like on my calendar, I'll just write people's names that I've talked to that day. But if I do it in this binder with my business activity tracker, it's just more, it's just more user friendly. Like I can go to one spot and find it all. And I keep up, I keep up with, did I, did I, um, did I do my personal development? Did I contact, did I connect with three people? Did I, did I listen to the national wake up call? Did I post on social media? You know, in some days there are X's, but I keep up with it. And when I'm struggling or when things are going really well, I can go back and I can see what I was doing at that time that, you know, that helped me be successful or not. And so, and also it's just a, for, especially for you newer coaches, like it's just a, a God, like, what do I do? Like tomorrow morning when I feel wake up and I feel extremely overwhelmed by everything that Rachel told me last night, like, what do I get up and I do today? And that business activity tracker is a perfect, perfect guide for you guys. Okay. And, um, so definitely, definitely track it and figure out, you know, so you can figure out what you're doing and what's working and what's not working. Uh, the last thing is definitely the compound effect. Um, do you have it? Have you bought it? It is in a PDF in this group if you don't want to buy it. Like you can look at it on your phone or you can print off a chapter a week, you know, well, not a week. You need to be reading faster than that. But um, <clears throat> definitely, definitely read it. If you're reading it, this probably, everything that I'm saying to you right now probably makes sense. And I will say, like, if you're not, start tonight. Like, go pull it up on your phone if you don't have it or pull it out 
and read for 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. Like that's all you don't have to spend hours a day reading personal development, but like guys, like I skipped this part in the beginning and it hurt me so badly. Like I was that girl. Um, and, and Andrea, we talked about this, but I, I think we talked about this. I think it was you. Well, um, but you know, who's that? Okay. Find her. Good. Um, but I didn't do it, and I felt like my, no, it wasn't you, it was somebody else, sorry. Um, I felt like my devotions were like, that's all I needed. Like, I just need to get up, read my Bible, and that's my personal development, which is great and awesome, and that should come first. But, like, I didn't know anything about business. Like, I knew nothing about marketing or posting or inviting or having conversations with people or anything. I, my brain does not work that way. So, like, I have to stay in personal development. Um, if you struggle with confidence, time management, these are all things that I've struggled with. You know, like, I find a good book written by somebody that God gifted with the talent to get it through my thick head, and and I read their advice because I don't have it. Like, I don't, I don't have that knowledge. Um, so if you're not doing personal development, I'll just straight up tell you, you're not going to stick with this business long. Um, you're not, you're not going to, you're not going to stick with it because it's going to get hard and you're going to get overwhelmed and you're going to quit. Um, and like Melanie said, you don't fail in this business unless you quit. And I know that this could be just a season for some of us, for all of us, but you know, you can be really successful in this business just by doing these tiny little things that we've talked about on this call tonight, just by working out and drinking your Shakeology, and posting, and inviting two people a day, you know, or your goal is to help three to five people this month, look, made you crave, that one I started with, now, I didn't, yeah, I, yeah, I, that was like my, that was my Bible in the beginning, because I wanted to eat chocolate cake, and fried chicken so bad, but that book really helped me a lot, um, made you crave is awesome, it's, and it, you know, it's a personal development book, without a doubt, um, right now, I'm reading, <clears throat> Look at my books. It's like, like it looks like my dog ate it. Um, but it's it's um, famous in heaven and at home by Michelle Myers, and it is a study of the Proverbs thirty one woman. But Michelle Myers is a businesswoman. Um, she's a beach body coach too, but she's a businesswoman. She makes all those tanks that I wear with the scripture on them. And this book is amazing. Like it's helped me so much in my business and my personal life. So uh, personal development, you you just got to do it. it. It makes things make sense. And it talks about consistency and building momentum and like that's what you've got to you've got to do those things in this business if you're gonna be successful. Um and you can be successful. Like I believe anybody can be successful in this business if they just put in the effort and the time. Um so that's all I got. I did good, I kept it at an hour. Um, but that's all I've got. Um, do you guys have any questions? I'm gonna unmute you guys. Because I know that was a lot, and I know that you are in conversations. But did this help with, like, your conversations? You know, Dee and Andrea, uh, we talked a lot, you know, about, you know, what do I say to this person, to that person? Did this help in in some ways? We're going to yeah. talk this week about inviting a lot in conversations. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I think um, this definitely helps, learning more. Um I think I've already botched up a, a couple of conversations pretty bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I've done that. <laughs> so I, I know I definitely did one. So uh, yeah. live and learn, right? So well, that's uh, the thing. Like you're not going to do it perfectly. That's why. That's why we do Coach Basics. That's you know. That's what to, to help you and to teach you. Like we've all done it. Uh, we've got stories. Go ahead. Oh yeah. So that's that's pretty much it. I. Uh, I just kind of doing it a few times and getting the feel for it and then hearing what you guys say and um, taking in the tips that you're giving. Um, I think that'll help tremendously. So I already feel like I'm better at it now than I was two days ago because yeah, Sunday I, I made a jerk out of myself a couple of times. But. Do you know, like as much as I tell coaches to go to somebody's page before they invite somebody, like my best piece of advice is go to somebody's page, see what's going on in their life. You know, what can you message them about? Like, Make sure their grandmother didn't die. I've done that. Um, so <laughs> then had like had a major accident and was laid up in the hospital. They didn't know if she, he was going to live. Like, do you want to go in a challenge group and work out and lose weight? Like, I did, yeah, I didn't take my own advice. So I've done some stupid stuff. I promise. Uh, but you learn from it. And I haven't done that again. I haven't done it again. But practice and patience. Like write those words down. 
practice and patience. You have to practice at this. I made that video today. It's like any new job. You're not going to know how to do it right when you walk in the door. Um, it takes time. It takes practice. It takes asking questions and doing things and making mistakes and learning from it. Um, it takes patience. You know, if the number one thing that I see coaches quit because people say no, you know, um, people are going to say no, you know, not everybody's going to want to do this right off the bat. Now, if we were selling candles, you might sell the heck out of some candles, but not everybody's going to want to do this. Um, and you have to have patience. You have to have patience with yourself and you have to have patience with the people that are following you and watching you and being those kind of guinea pigs for you, honestly. Um, and so like, if you want to practice on your family or your husband or your aunt or your sister-in-law, you know, do it. Say, Hey, I want to kind of go through this conversation with you about a challenge group. Would you let me and tell me, give me some feedback? I mean, but like, just, just have patience with yourself. Um, and that's, that's all I have. Do anybody else have anything to add or ask a question? Okay. All right. So I have a question. Yes. Okay. So I was talking a bit with Beck about this today. So I am in a full-time job right now that, I'm hoping to not be in by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So as I look to September and trying to have my first challenge group in September, do you have pointers of, cause I was really listening to y'all the other day about how to be very clear that this is a business, that there's a cost involved, you know, as you're trying to be clear about it, do you have tips about how to also not, you know, I don't want anybody that I work with, especially all my bosses that I'm Facebook friends with to be like, what is she doing? She's starting a business. Well, she works for me. So do you have tips about how to maybe be direct, be, be confident, but also I have that little balance there with yeah. the full-time job that I have. Yeah. Becca, Becca, we talked about this a little bit. Um, and you know, as far as inviting to challenge groups and your challenge group ads, like people don't, it's not like you're saying, join my team. I'm trying to build a business or anything like that. Like I, you know, in my challenge group, I don't think anything about like, you know, spending money or anything like that. I don't think. Um, now people know just from my daily posts that I do the, these workouts and I, um, you know, I drink Shakeology and I share that about like when I share Transformation Tuesday that so-and-so worked out and drank Shakeology, you know, so they, they get what I'm about, but I don't really, you don't have to, you don't have to say anything. I mean, you don't, don't want to say anything about sales or anything like that. Uh, and, and, you know, as you get into conversations and you talk to people and you describe what the challenge group is, that's where you do that one-on-one. -on -one. So I think you can totally avoid that. Um, as far as your coaching announcement, um, like my coaching announcement doesn't say anything about making money. It just talks about, you know, how I did the 21 day fix and, and drank Shakeology and had results in a challenge group. And I want to help people do the same thing. Uh, now, obviously, I mean, it doesn't take a, a, a brain surgeon to figure out that you're probably in some form making some money. But, um, you know, like I was telling Becca today, I mean, like it's a, it started as a hobby for me. I mean, I did it in, in the time that I wasn't at work. You know, I, I would, just doing like an hour a day. Um, and you know, too, it just, I mean, like I told her, it's kind of an extension of a ministry of caring for people, you know, but I think that you can probably avoid that until the end of the year for sure. Okay. That's helpful. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, anybody else? All right, guys, I know it's late and it's nine o'clock on the dot. So I will close this call. And we will just jump back into it tomorrow. You guys are doing great, though. Okay. Thanks, Rachel. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks.